Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 938. If you want to download this workbook 938 to 941, click on the link below the video. In this video, we want to be able to select from a drop down a name, Robert. Find the row associated with Robert and then get the last number. So you can see it's 57. However, if there are words in it and I pick Cynthia, I want the last number, which would be 25. All right, and then we'll see how to look up the last text item and then see how to look up the last item, regardless if it's a number or text. Now, the, the first part to this is we have a two-way lookup table. And we want to be able to select this and choose the row. So the first formula element we'll look at, look at is how to look up a row. We're going to use the index function. Index has an array. We're going to select the entire two-way array, meaning rows and columns. I'm going to hit the F4 key, comma. And now I'm going to use the match function to get the row number. Now, right now, Cynthia, 1, 2. So in order to tell the index function what row we want, we need to look up the relative position of Cynthia in this list, which would be 2. So we use the match. Now I'm going to click on Cynthia, and I'm going to hit the F4 key one, two, three time to lock the column reference, but not the row, because I'm going to copy this over and then amend it. All right, so it's locked on the column. We're looking up. The match function is looking up Cynthia, comma, within what lookup array? That range, and then I'm going to hit F4, comma, and we are doing exact match, which is a 0, because the uh, names are not sorted. All right. Now, what does match do? If you highlight this right here and hit the F9 key, you can see it gives me a 2. Let's just see, before we see how to look up an entire row, comma, what the column number does. If I put 3 here, that means match is delivering F9 to evaluate. It's delivering a 2. So it would go 1, 2, and then that's the row, 1, 2, 3. And index right now is doing a two-way lookup. Now I'm going to Control Z. And if I enter this, you can see that that's true. Not only that, but if you highlight this and hit the F9 key, you can evaluate and see that, sure enough, two-way lookup delivering a single value. Control Z. But check this out. The whole trick to looking up in a row is if it's a row we want, you leave that argument column number, you either put a 0 or leave it empty. That instructs indexed to take all the columns. So right now it's got a 2 for match. A blank in column number says give me all the columns. So now when I hide the, highlight this and hit the F9 key to evaluate, it looked up the row. Control Z. Now I'm going to enter this, Control Enter, and copy it over. That'll be the base for each one of our different formulas. Now, let's go ahead and to look up the last number, we're going to use, up the, use the lookup function. OK, so lookup value. Well, the way lookup works is it does approximate match only. And if you give it a really big number, then it always goes to the last one and takes the last one. So I'm going to give it some big number, like 1,000. Let's say I'm never going to have more than 1,000 items sold here. So the lookup value is 1,000 within that right there close parentheses because the lookup vector is the the row that index is delivering close parentheses and control enter so it's found it found 25 if i change this to joe it finds 22 if i change this to sue right it's it sees the 13 which is right there so it looks like it's working for the number all right, now, one other thing about this big number, a lot of times you'll see formulas that just put in the biggest number that Excel understands. 9.12345678910112131314, and then you use scientific notation, E plus 307. That 307 means to slide the decimal 307 places over there. Now, the theory of using the biggest number that Excel understands is that then it will never make a mistake no matter what big numbers. But obviously, if you're never going to have a th more than a 1,000, that 1,000 will work. Now, something on that topic, I've done lots of videos using that number. I had read an interesting post uh, about a month ago from Stefan Ger Gersuk, 
if I'm pronouncing that right, and he said, ah, oh, this is technically the number, biggest number that Excel can see. And if you enter it as a formula, it just shows you the plus 308, but it's really that number right there. So sometimes people, if they're always looking up last, they put this into a defined name as their big number, and then they use the big num as a defined name every time they need to look up the last number. All right, now let's talk about text. All right, so actually, let's do this. I'm going to copy this over. All right, so right now, this is the same formula as we just uh, used for number, but we put a big number here. But let's think about this. Let's put a big text here. Well, the biggest lookup value, and if I delete this right here, you can see my cursor says lookup value. The largest number of characters that the lookup function can handle is 255 characters. So if we put like the letter Z, which is the last letter in the uh, alphabet, if we repeated Z 255 times, that in essence would be kind of creating the biggest text item or word that lookup can handle. So I'm going to use the repeat function. Right, so repeat what text, comma, Z. And then comma how many times? 255. Right, if you were to highlight this and hit the F9 key, you could see it just can repeats Zs. All right, so that will work just fine. Now for Sue, there aren't any. And I'm getting this NA and I want it. It means there is no last text item. But obviously, if I change this to uh, Joe, right? I better say none. If I change it to Cynthia, it better say max. So Cynthia, and it says max. Now, uh, I don't know, a couple months ago, I did a post where we looked up the last text item, and I used this, and Hammy72 at YouTube said, hey, the last letter in the English al alphabet is Z, but the last letter in the Greek alphabet is omega. Right? And so if you put that in, in case you're using Greek letters, it's like even more robust of a formula. Now, the cool thing is, there's a keyboard shortcut to put omega in. It's Alt 234. So ready? I'm going to hold Alt and then 234. Right? So that'll work if you're using Greek letters. It's like the last letter in the Greek alphabet. All right? So there's our formula for look up the uh, name and then find the last text item. Look up the name and then find the uh, biggest number. Right? Now, what if you wanted to do both? All right, so actually I'm going to copy this formula right here. So we need to look up either one, right? Delete and then F2. So right now, the last anything for Joe should be none. The last anything from Cynthia should be 25. So sometimes we have text, sometimes we have a number. All right, well, let's think about this. Here is our little piece right here. That's the look up the row. So if I hit F9, you could see it's the row. So I need to somehow, from this set of data, which has uh, numbers and words, uh, get a true for just the last number or word. So I'm going to Control Z in parentheses. Before I put it in parentheses, I'm going to use the not symbol, less than, greater than, and then double quote and then close parentheses. Now that converts it from delivering a bunch of numbers and words to true for when it's not blank. That's the syntax for blank. So ready? If I highlight this and hit the F9 key to evaluate. True, 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 false, false, false. So I really want that last true, so I'm going to Control Z. I'm going to say 1 divided by. Now this big number will work here, but in this case when we're going to get 1 divided by false, which is a divide by 0 error, and 1 divided by true, which is 1, the biggest number we're ever going to need is 2. That will get to the last one. So right now, if I highlight this little bit, this is the lookup vector, which determines the position when I'm looking up 2. If I hit F9, ah, so now when 2 looks up, it'll go because that's bigger. It'll take the last one. That'll give it the position to then use the result vector right there, Control Z. And guess what? This little index bit right here, Control C. Notice I'm in the lookup vector, comma, the result vector. Those, those are the items to return after we've determined the position from the 
lookup value and lookup vector, control V, and that will do it. So 25 for Cynthia. When I come over here to Joe, right? So Joe, the last anything is none. When I come down to Sue, the last anything is that 13. Come down to Sheila, D and A. All righty, uh, we'll see you next trick.